The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 64, making the steam pipe to the injector and fitting the injector in position. Before I start this particular episode, I'd better mention what an injector actually is. It's a device that pumps water into the boiler using steam from the boiler to do so. I'm not going to go into the tech detail. I've done that before in the past. Recently, a viewer sent me a comment, which was more of an essay, but it really did contain a very accurate description of how a live steam injector works. You can, of course, get this information by using Google. In this clip I'm showing the end of the job before I even start it. You can see that there is a quarter of an inch diameter pipe that runs from a tap all the way down the side of the firebox which eventually goes to the injector underneath. The job starts by selecting a suitable length of a quarter inch diameter copper pipe and bending it. Initially I was going to use this pipe bender but then I thought well I can bend this by hand. Sometimes but not always copper piping can look quite good if you bend it by hand because at both ends, entry to the bend point is a bit smoother than when you use a pipe bender. The very first thing to do before I forget is to fit this. It's a short length of silicone rubber tubing fitted on the piece of pipe where it goes through the foot plate. It's very important that any steam or water piping is not in direct contact with any part of the frame, the chassis, the foot plate or anywhere else for that matter. Here you can see the principle. This piece of pipe has to come down from the boiler through the foot plate and then it goes to the injector that's fitted underneath. And this is where this piece of silicone rubber tubing needs to be. Make sure it's not like this. The silicone rubber tubing needs to be exactly halfway through the hole. Here's a bit of a tip. Do not put too long a length of silicone tubing on the copper pipe. Otherwise you will find it very difficult to slide into place, even with lubrication. When the injector is fitted, it's not going to wobble about like this, it's going to be in a fixed position. But once again it's very important to make sure that the piece of tubing is equidistant above and below the foot plate. You will notice that on this piece of copper pipe I have silver soldered unions at each end. These are 3 8 by 32 union nuts, one on each end. I fitted a standard pipe union on both ends because I wasn't thinking. I've done this job so many times I should know better but today I was in autopilot mode and it went wrong. Once the union nut was tightened so that the copper pipe was rigidly mounted to the tap I could then bend it manually into its final position. This is slightly more difficult than it looks but I did get there in the end. In this video I am going to make some mistakes and I'd like to be smug and say oh well I've done this on purpose but this one is a genuine error. I fitted taper coned unions at both ends but when plumbing a live steam injector always remember the unions need to be flat. This is so you can undo the injector and move it out of the way without having to disturb the piping because of the cone part of a normal union. That was mistake number one. And here comes mistake number two. I do not normally work with injectors of this size and the union nuts are much bigger than a normal 3 8 by 32 type. I heated the pipe to remove the original taper cone. Then I fitted the larger union nut but there was a problem. It would not go through the existing hole in the foot plate which I'm currently enlarging using a hole cutter. Before fitting the pipe through, I deburred the hole so there were no sharp edges. This is quite a long pipe with plenty of bends in it, so it was important to make sure I got it in the right place. For instance here, it is not in the right place. It looks good tucked in behind the existing piping, but this would mean that the injector is too far inboard of the foot plate. Live steam injectors have a water overflow and this needs to be visible so you can tell whether the injector is injecting or not. This is not a mistake, I'm showing you one of the union cones. This one is the outlet cone and as you can see it's quite large. And the pipe that fits onto this end is the one that goes to the boiler, not the one that comes from the steam tap. If you look at this diagram that came with the injector, it's easy to remember. It's just in, in, out. That's steam in, water in and steam out. In, in, out. 
This is the injector cone at the steam inlet end and as you can see it's much slimmer and don't worry you can't get them mixed up both of the holes in the injector are different sizes. I've just mentioned about the routing of the pipe and here I'm redoing it so it's in the correct place. It needs to be outboard of the water bypass valve. It also needs to be outboard of the brake shaft too. This moves the injector nearer to the edge of the foot plate. In this clip I'm fitting the injector to the end of the pipe and don't forget it's in, in, out. Steam in, water in and out to the boiler. This injector is going to take its water from an external tank. Why is that I hear you say? Live steam injectors do not like working with warm or hot water and the water from the saddle tank, because it's over the boiler, will become quite warm very quickly. That's why I've drilled a hole in the drag beam. In this is going to be a water fitting which will allow the connection of an external water source from the driving truck and because of the proximity of the injector to the drag beam the pipe will be short which will make it a very rigid fitting. As I fit the water supply to the injector from the drag beam fitting I need to make sure that this piece of silicone rubber sits exactly in the middle of the hole not as you see it here over to one side. That's about it, I refitted the pipe to the brake valve and here I'm making some minute adjustments to the position of the quarter inch pipe to the injector. Time for me to go and as always stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back